Welcome to Southwest Rising, Contemporary Art and the Legacy of Elaine Horwich. I'm Julie Saucy, the Chief Curator at the Tucson Museum of Art, and I had the pleasure of working for Elaine Horwich in the 1980s and early 1990s. She was an amazing woman. She was responsible for launching the careers of hundreds of artists in the Southwest and the nation, and she also was very much instrumental in the rise of what's now called New Western Art, or Southwest Pop. She had an over-the-top personality. She drove a 1950s Rolls-Royce or a Range Rover. She carried a Smith & Wesson pearl-handled pistol that she often whipped out and plopped on her desk or at a restaurant table just to shock her patrons. She wore flashy cowboy boots and prairie skirts and aviator sunglasses. So she really exhibited the idea of the Annie Oakley of the art world. She even had her own airplane. Elaine Horwich had a singular vision. She knew what she was interested in. It was something that was a mixture of irreverent humor, historic reverie, and bold, bright colors. She showed something like 250 artists at her five locations throughout the Southwest. She started in 1964 with a, a business that she had with Suzanne Brown called The Art Wagon. But when she branched off on her own in 1973, she started to aggressively take on some of the top artists in the Southwest. One of those artists came to her in 1981, Joe Baker, a Delaware uh, Native American who had come from Oklahoma. Once he saw Elaine Horwich, he knew she was the top gallerist in the whole city, if not the Southwest and they were both eager to work with each other. What was special about Joe Baker's paintings is that he combined a sort of whimsical humor about the modern suburban lifestyle, mixing it with images and cliches of Native American culture and life. So for instance, he would have a golden retriever by a swimming pool, but wearing a, a full Plains Indian headdress. Or he would have a Native American princess on a painted pony, but she would be wearing heart-shaped sunglasses and a big white brassiere. So he poked fun at our new kind of Southwest lifestyle. This painting stands out for its personal history and personal connection to Elaine Horwich. She had a beautiful, massive adobe home, a historic home that was built in the 1930s, uh, in the outskirts of Santa Fe. It was so much fun to be there. People rode horses, they would do camp kinds of projects like beadwork or lanyard making. Uh, she had a massive garden, so every visitor who came there just had the best time. So they started to call it, in a humorous way, Camp Horwich. Elaine Horwich loved camp. She had gone to the Burr Oaks camp in Wisconsin for years when she was a child living in Chicago. So the idea of camp was very much a part of her persona. So Camp Horwich was the way of talking about uh, staying at Elaine Horwich's house in the summertime. And oftentimes her employees would stay there as well when they came over from Scottsdale for the summer. So here you have, in this painting, scrawled across the top, Camp Horwich, while a Native American warrior is saluting the house. Uh, why would anybody salute the house? Well, it was the site of her legendary Indian market parties. Hundreds of people would come in from all over the country and they would fight for a chance to be on the special party list. She would have bands and a special caterer coming in or multiple food trucks. Hundreds of people, celebrities, movie stars, uh, famous authors would all be mingling with the artists and the patrons. It was quite the lovely party.